Welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Simon. And I'm Stuart. We've been finding, buying and creating income from investment properties for over 20 years. And we talk every week about the reality of running our property businesses. Don't forget that if you're enjoying this podcast, please do leave us a rating or review in your podcast player of choice. Right, diving straight in this week, we are going to be talking about some developments in Stuart's property business. And one of them, which has been happening really very rapidly for, for, for the property world, especially, but it's a new rent-to-rent deal that, that Stuart has, has made and a, a new property that he's taking on and, and including in his portfolio. And we are recording sort of towards the end of August. And I think you said, Stuart, that you, you got access to this property only at the end of July and you, you sort of turned it around in a month. So perhaps, perhaps we could start just before that and you could give us a bit of background on how you, how you got and how you found this new rent-to-rent deal. Well, this one's really interesting because I've been in touch with this homeowner for probably almost two years now. And yeah, he, he got in touch with me like a couple of years ago, said he was thinking about moving from the existing agent but it was a student property, so they were going to be in there till August. And then and then basically they found new tenants, so that kind of rolled on. However, I'd always stayed in touch with him. It just so happens he lives in New Zealand, funnily enough. And I, that, I just that really is remote investing. It is very, very remote. You, I don't think you can get much more remote than that. Probably uh, that, that is as, as far away as you can get. And, of course, we stayed, in, we stayed in contact, and I'm pleased we did because he finally sort of said, yeah, I'd like to take on the the property. It's a five bed Victorian property. However, the tenants are going to be in it until August the seventeenth. So you know, we've just just passed that, and you know, fortunately, we've lined up a, a number of tenants to to come into the property from the first of September, which left us with a very very punchy turnaround time because the property. As I said to you, it was it's in a it was in a real two and eight really, um, mostly, yeah, mostly you know just the detritus of five students living life to the fullest. I could say is the best I could say. <laughs> so so that's a turnaround time of two weeks, give or take, from previous tenants leaving to new tenants arriving. So what were you expecting to need to sort of? fit into that actually let me take a step back when you agreed to take on this this deal and this property um i'm sure you'd had a look around the property so so had you already sort of prepped what was needed well this is a funny story for me personally because i remember the first time i looked around the property i thought oh i love it's it's a lovely property don't get me wrong structurally it's a good property in terms of the, the the ceiling heights and the you know the characters it's a victorian property sort of property i really like really nice curb appeal if you put to one side the color of it but the first time I walked around it I thought yeah this is a great property I like the size of the rooms I know this will work in this area second time I walked around the property actually the owner was over visiting family and we agreed to go around it together the second time I walked around it in my head my head was in my hands I was like oh my goodness what have I done (laughs) like we'd already agreed and signed contracts and I was walking okay Oh my god! You know this needs a lot of work. So, and then, however, you know the, the third time I went round, I was like, "Yes, okay, we can do this. We can do this." So, so let, let, let's add some time scales. Uh, when was that first time? And when was the second time? And then when was the third time? Or, okay, or so distance it, between them, all, all within sort of the, like the last twelve months. So, you know, the, the first time was about twelve months ago. Second time actually was three or four months ago when I was thinking, oh my gosh. And then probably a month before uh, I knew I was going to get access to the property. But in summary, what we needed to do to the property was replace carpets, paint the whole of the inside, remove a a ton of waste, um, probably won't weigh a ton, but it it will look like a ton. There was just, you know, tires, four tires in the garden, broken gates, kitchen hood broken, kitchen floor a mess so that we need to replace that, replace vinyl in the bathroom. Uh, and I worked out we'd need a lot of furniture, three beds, three mattresses, wardrobes, side tables. And we had to do that essentially from the 18th of August. 
that's yeah that's not a lot of time that i mean i, I have had a a three bed property repainted from from top to bottom so I mean, it, was, it was a thorough repaint and and i think that uh, i was under some some time pressure with that as well and i think i managed to get that done in the end in about two weeks and there was there was a team of maybe four or five painters that came in and, and worked on that and and it sounds like you're you're doing that plus some extra bits so is it that was it a complete sort of top to bottom repaint or was it just a, mm. a sort of bit of paint here and a bit of paint there no no it was a complete repaint so all of the walls were repainted white all of the bedrooms had a feature wall painted nice navy color may i may i add um quite like it um <laughs> If if we could be bothered, we'd add photos, but we but we won't. So no, um, uh, yeah, no. So it was a complete repaint, uh, which says you a good job. Now, one thing I should say, and I'm going to whisper it on this podcast, I did get my my builders team access to the building the week before we should have had keys, and you know I'm happy to share this because you know I had been to the property and I knew that most of the students had moved out. So we cheated slightly. We started maybe two or three days before we should have. And I think there was uh, one tenant there, but it was fine because we had a conversation. Uh, and that gave us just a tiny head start. Uh, and as I said to you, I mean, the, the real challenge for me was to do that plus getting the carpets replaced and getting the furniture and getting the deep clean, which which it thoroughly, thoroughly needs as well. And that's proven to be, so as of this recording, <laughs> all of that is yet to happen, is going to happen in the next week. But I do trust the team because, and this is something that you and I talk about a bit, you know, when we're not recording, but because I've worked with a number of these people before, they know how I work. They trust me. You know, they've been paid numerous times. You know, we've worked together. They know it's, you know, when I give them a job, it's not going to suddenly get pulled or something like that. So when I, when I phoned the people, so, and again, I hadn't clocked that it was bank holiday Monday. So also we've got to do everything on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So essentially we've got the, literally the painting and decorating has just finished. We'll then get the carpets down because that makes sense <laughs> to not do any painting before you get new carpets down. So we're going to get all the new carpets down before that we'll get all the waste removed. And again, there's a lot of waste to, you know, so we've got a number of mattresses, just the, detritus of 10 years of student life all over the place and they clearly had a lot of confetti and glitter before they left oh, uh, no. so all of that so we've got that coming out on the tuesday then we've got all the furniture coming in on the wednesday uh which then needs to be built so we've got wardrobes beds side tables chests of drawers that's all coming in to be built then that's going to happen uh, on the morning and then we've got a full deep clean in the afternoon now i personally had to go and bring down some curtains lampshades toilet seats this is the glamour people this is the glamour of the rent to rent so, so th that's an interesting point actually because what, one of the the features of this this project that you, you you've taken on is that you were this is in your normal investment area which is remote to where you live by about four hours drive give or take and this, this week just gone your decoration team was on the job and, and getting on with things but at some point on Wednesday, you, you had a phone call or a series of phone calls and it became apparent that you were going to need to be in your investment area four hours away first thing the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and this was completely unplanned. So, yeah, what, what, why? How did that come about? Well, primarily because we knew we needed some items and the people that I usually relied on weren't in the area so uh, you know august is holiday season there's not people around and also august as anyone that operates in hmo land will tell you is the busiest month for everybody involved in hmos and uh, it, it's actually quite amusing sometimes you can walk down the street if i can walk down the street in any street in in the in the area around the university you can genuinely see mattresses getting thrown out of windows like not rock and roll stars this is people you know you'll hear drills you'll hear soaring because essentially in Studentsville you get two weeks to do all of the maintenance 
that is required before the next intake comes in. And it is actually quite funny. You will see just, you know, lots of handymen, builders, painters, removals, all happening. And because of that, the people that I usually would rely on to just go and do what I call I don't, the soft furnishings of, you know, getting curtains and, and, and lampshades and mattress covers that needed to be in place at a certain time. It, you know, so basically the people that would just do the odd jobs for me wouldn't be around. And equally, what we needed to know by that time in the morning was we needed to know exactly what was needed in the in the house. So. If we didn't know, you know, of all of the stuff I've just mentioned in terms of the beds and wardrobes, by by that afternoon, then I wouldn't have been able to order it and get it built in the property in time. And unfortunately, I ran out of people to do that for me. So I just thought, well, OK, I'm just going to have to go down there, do the list myself and and then share that with, you know, with the team so that they can go out and do what they need to do. OK, then. so so let, let's let's lay on just how glamorous property businesses are this was on a wednesday you'd had these phone calls you concluded you were going to have to be there on the thursday so what did your thursday look like alarm goes off at 4 45 a.m i'm in the car at 5 a.m with with coffee i arrive in uh near my property at quarter past nine and we walk i walk around the house with the builder and making a list of all of the things that we're going to need to do that that haven't been done, all of the items that need to be ordered. You know, obviously not all of that relates to the builder, but it was also just a bit of a walkthrough of the, you know, the the snagging, if you like. Uh, Then I go to Dunelm, get all of the things we need. You know, one of the builders says, oh, your toilet seat's broken. So I think, well, I might as well just do that. So, uh, and, and, you know, I have a ticking clock, which is I had to be back in the area for reasons we don't need to talk about, but I needed to be back home by 5 p.m. So, uh, and it was a pretty much of a non-negotiable. So I'm literally running around, going to the shop. Then letting agent came over to meet me and we run around and we just go through my list, see if he agrees with that, see what else he'd suggest. And I pick up mattress covers and, and things like that. So I'm, I, I am genuinely running around for two hours uh, and then I'm back on the road at quarter to 12 uh, and I'm back in the car. So I'm, I'm, I'm there for about two, two and a half hours tops and then back on the road, um, sitting in wonderful A303 traffic on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> My goodness. So so in, in the really quite short two-ish hours, you, you were making lists of things, talking to multiple people to, to plan what they were doing next and, and solving problems that they'd, they, they'd come up with and visiting multiple shops in order to actually buy and, and order stuff. Were, were you, did you actually sort of pick up some of that stuff and, and take it back to the property then and yeah. there as well? Yeah. yeah, did that. And of course, you know, the thing I forget is at the same time, so like you say, I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the phone to waste removal, carpet fitters, cleaners, furniture companies, and at the same time, realized that the energy company again i was a bit ahead of myself but the energy company i've spoken to hadn't done anything and as you know the one key thing if you don't have broadband in place on day one your name is mud from the very outset and here we are you know you know as of when i went down there you know eight days before they arrive and there's no broadband yeah you can live without water don't don't need to wash don't don't need to drink but but you can't have no internet that's <laughs> just yeah. unacceptable you don't need to wash when you're watching netflix do you and let's not go down actually no let's not go down that road <laughs> oh dear right so are your utilities on track tbc but um oh no i, I would say yes i mean we, yeah we've the thing is we, we've um so typically we use Virgin and they will take 14 days to install. So of the day, it was like, that's not going to happen. But we've now we've found an alternative provider that can get in a lot quicker. So, so broadband is going to be solved. But then, uh, you know, just to explain that for those listening, you know, we also do gas, electric, water, council tax, TV license. So all of that has to be in play, obviously, well, from the 1st of uh, September. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Right. So... As it currently stands, I think you mentioned earlier you've you've got different things scheduled for different days next week. Is it all looking like it will all land in time? At at this point in time, he says gripping 
the table with all of his might? Yes, because we've scheduled it all in. I've set reminders for myself every morning to make sure that I call the tradesperson or company involved to make sure that they are going to be on site doing what they say they're going to do. And I have been down this road a couple of times before, so it's not my first rodeo, as they say. So whilst I, I, w- I would never say I'm apprehensive, it's like I've now done what I can. So all I can do then is on each day make sure that the person doing their job is doing the job. And if that wasn't to happen, then we just work out a solution. It, and it really is as simple as that. And, you know, there are some days where, you know, I've fallen out with letting agents and tenants because – we didn't have in place what we should have had in place. And and that can happen. Obviously, the reason I go down like I do at the drop of a hat is to is to try and mitigate those things and make sure that they don't happen. But I'm still accepting that they can. But as of this recording, we've we've scheduled everyone that we needed to schedule. I think it's very interesting that you, you you've you've planned it, you've scheduled it, you've ordered things, you've spoken to people to to know or to check they know what they're doing. However, you are still planning to be active on each of the the days over that time period, mm. following up, chasing people, checking things are happening, checking that progress is being made. So although in theory it should all happen without you, you're, you're, you're not leaving it to chance. You're not, not letting it, it go at that point. Mm. It, it's interesting you picked up on that, Simon, because I think that's the one thing, if ever there's a lesson to, for people, it's that you are always responsible. And if you have to be proactive. And I know it's very easy to throw up our hands in the air and say tradesman X didn't turn up or tradesman Y, and that will happen. But for me, we are always responsible up until the point where I where we can do no more. Because I, obviously I can't physically force a plumber, a painter, a cleaning person to, to be on site, but I can make sure that I've done everything in my power to to remind them and, and you know, chase them. So I, I think that's just a lesson that I would share with anyone is, you know, always remain responsible up until that point you're not but equally there's a little bit of balance to that you can't micromanage people yeah yeah <laughs> if you uh, if you micromanage them too much they'll just get get annoyed with you <laughs> you mentioned uh, tenants and letting agents a few moments ago and and of course we've we've mentioned several times you have got tenants lined up to move in at the beginning of term so i have a a, a big question about that really in so much as you obviously found those tenants at some point. However, until, well, actually until next week, the property hasn't really looked its best. Mm-hmm. So when, when did you find these tenants or whoever did find these tenants, when did that happen? And, and were they sold on the property looking like it did before and they're just going to be amazed when they turn up next week? Or, or were they sold it as it being a, a fully refurbed property by the time they get there? Good question. And I think... You know, my initial view is that it's easier to sell a property that is about to have works done on it than it is on just an average property. Sell the dream. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so so that would have happened actually in August because we, we needed to show people around. And, you know, we, we do have very good relationships and a very good agent in the area. And that strikes me as really very, very late to be finding new new tenants for, for the new academic year. Or or, or do you mean August last year? (laughs) So the new tenants won't be students. So they will be working professionals. And and that's what we do in the property. So Ah, I hadn't realised that. So the fact that they're they're moving in at the start of term is just coincidental. It's just coincidental. It's just that I wasn't clear on that. It's just, yeah, so we've changed the student types. Typically, most of our properties now, when, when we take them on, wherever they've come from, they will typically become young stroke working professional properties. Um, but yeah, I do think, you know, we've got a few, and I'll be honest, average properties. You know, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm proud of them, but they're, they're okay. Would, would I be happy to put my kids in? Yeah, I probably would, but they're not great. But I think it's easier when you've got something that is really dowdy and is clearly in need of work. And you just take people around and say, look, you're going to come into a property that all of this is going to get painted. This floor is going to get changed. That's going to get done. So obviously, <laughs> you have to make sure that that's happened because what you do know is if they come in and things have all been done half hours, which is why I'm so happy that we've that we've managed to do what we've done so far. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty confident that that they wouldn't extend their initial six month term. So that's on us. And you know, when when tenants have committed, I also feel more. 
connected to them in terms of look they've they've actually taken a risk because they didn't have to and i'm more obliged to do things in that property that i probably wouldn't usually do like you, you know like the, the, i don't know if something happens if they say they want an extra sofa i'd be more inclined to put one in i really would and if they wanted an extra tv i'd be okay there's a bit of a cost attached to that but i think you know what they've taken a slight risk and they've committed to it and i'll i'll do likewise so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a two way street stroke quid pro quo or whatever the phrase is. But I'm, you know, so, so yeah, I, I I generally think it is slightly easier to sell properties where you haven't done anything. Of course, it depends on the tenant type because I know that some people just can't see that. But again, I think with a good agent or if you're very good at painting pictures yourself with with words, then then I think that's more more possible to do. So I was I was assuming that you will have achieved an improvement on the rent back when I was thinking this was new students coming in. But now you're also changing the tenant profile. Uh, I, I, I'm doubling down on that, that assumption. And I, I guess you must have achieved a, a good uplift in, in the rents you're, you're expecting from your new tenants versus the ones who have just been leaving. So can you share what, what kind of improvement in rent levels you're, you're looking at? Well, in terms of improvement, I couldn't be specific because obviously I didn't rent it in the previous year. So, but I do know, but I'm I'm very confident that we will be raising that level. So I would imagine that the rents were somewhere around the £2,000 mark. Um, I'm pretty confident with that. So gross rent we're talking about, which is the rent that the tenant pays to us, would have been around £2,000. And I think we're going to raise that by, you know, if we're, if we're talking percentages, I'd say we're going to raise that by 30 to 35%. And that is, is simply a function of the fact that we have painted the whole place, we've recarpeted new furniture and so on. I still think there's a little bit of work to be done, but I, and again, they are good rates. They're good rates in the property. Yeah, so I, I think that's really good. For, for only two weeks of effort, you, you've managed to, to improve the return on that, <laughs> that, that property by, by 30%. I mean, that's excellent. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, I know we're, uh, we're, we're getting into the final straight of this podcast, but, and that's an interesting point, which I know you say tongue in cheek, and I'm just going to bring this out for the listener is that, of course, you know, what some people might have missed as well, that I've been talking to this owner for two years and stayed in touch with this owner for two years. And if, yes, we've had to put in two weeks of significant works to get the property to where it needs to be but the effort involved actually of having a team that could do that has has taken several years but also knowing an owner engaging with an owner creating a relationship with an owner took a couple of years as well to to be able to be in that situation so i just wanted to bring that out because i think it sometimes gets gets missed in the in the in the in the in the joys of rental indeed two years to overnight success (laughs) and on that note uh, I think we're finishing up. So we, we do hope you've enjoyed listening to, to this sort of deeper dive on a, a particular project that Stuart's been working on or is still working on. Please do get in touch. Let us know what you think. You can email us on show at thebusinessofproperty.com. And you can also find all our past episodes and show notes at thebusinessofproperty.com. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again next week.